Should we now go to AI risk? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Okay, because you know, it seems pretty possible to me that in a couple of years, like all those people who are worried about going, who like going for the uh, the fentanyl or, or the like wrong asthma drug, if that was legal, mm -hmm. uh, they might go for the lilim. The what? The lilim. <laughs> Can you, oh, for the, because somebody in there, I think that guy said he didn't know what you meant by that. Can you explain what that is? Oh, so, uh, <laughs> so, you know, Lilium, children of Lilith, uh, in oh. some interpretations, succubi. Gotcha, uh, okay. There's another, it, way, to, there's another right. way to pronounce LLM. And, you know, I'm a bit, bit worried about, like, how those start interfacing with humans in a couple of years. We're worried about addictive stuff, you know, like, I'd say that if the FDA was abolished tomorrow and you wanted to prevent as much addiction as possible, you know, like, first worry about LLMs in a couple of years, mm -hmm. and then worry about the, that pharmaceutical market that just got deregulated. Sure, so I'm gonna ask, uh, I'll, I'll just ask general questions, and I'm sure if nobody else might. Sorry, okay. and right. a couple of years is not remotely precise, to be clear. Okay. Could, could it be three months, could, could be like five years. Um, one thing that I think people here, uh, the normal people, not you guys, because every person I've talked to here does like AI or ML research. It's like every, wait, I'm actually so curious. Hold on. How many of you guys work in something like AI or ML like related? Okay. Yeah. Decent amount. That's kind of weird. Okay. Um, I wonder sometimes. We, no. Okay. Um, he, so here's a question. A lot of people have heard this thing is going to be the next thing in five years. I think I've heard about self-driving cars like almost since I was in college. Um, that, that we were right around the corner from it, and it seems like today we're no closer than we were in the past, or that the next version of ChatGPT or some, I know art generators were really big for a, a point in time, and now at least probably we're not talking about it as much. If there was somebody hypothetically that said, okay, you're saying this thing about AI, but people have said this about all technology, and it's always five years away, and Elon's been talking about Neuralink, and it's not happening, and blah, 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 blah. What would be like the one or two most convincing arguments you'd have for them that, well, this time it's different, this is actually a threat? Timing is much harder to predict than endpoints. I agree, yeah. Um, I, I was not in the self-driving car brigade. I was like, you know, I, I obviously it was going to get solved eventually, but it wasn't clear to me that it was going to be solved and legalized before the end of the world, though things on the legal front are not looking interesting. Things on the technology front are allegedly looking interesting. I haven't checked in detail. Um, it's much easier to, like, in 2001, I did not predict that this stuff was going to become an issue in 20 years. I predicted it was going to become an issue eventually. In like 2004, I sketched out a scenario for how the world ends that involved a superintelligence cracking a special case of the protein folding problem. I could not have told you that like the general case of the biological protein folding problem was going to be cracked in 2020 by alpha fold two. Like I could not have timed it. I can I was would might not even have been confident that you could like predict biological protein folding in full generality as opposed to like choose a special case and engineer it. I definitely wouldn't have been able to predict that it could be done by, you know, deep nets. Though al though alpha fold two is legitimately more complicated than just a giant stack of deep nets like an LLM. Do you think on on that, on the velocity thing, on the trajectory thing here, um, the first topic that we talked about was getting people to bet on outcomes as a way to kind of hold people accountable or make better predictions. Do you think that to some people, they would say that it feels unsatisfying that you can make such strong predictions about the endpoints of AI if those endpoints could be outside of everybody here's natural life cycle? That if this is happening in 200 years, I don't really care about it. I don't even want to think about it. Whereas if this is going to happen in like 15 or 20 years, it suddenly becomes like the most pressing thing for anybody to think about. I would bet far bet on 15 or 20 over 200 and possibly on 10 over 20. Um, but that is much more me eyeballing things. That is me looking at like how fast things have gone and at the fact that GPT-4 got further than I expected the entire tech stack to, to um, stall out at. Like I was expecting like GPT-3 to, to mostly stall out and then GPT-4 did not. And maybe GPT-4 stalls out, but, but I don't know anymore. What do you think are, what are technologies that uh, people that are hesitant to believe in, in, I don't want to call it doomerism because that sounds uh, dismissive, but for people that don't think it's big, as big of a problem, what are the technologies that they should be eyeballing where you could be like, look at how insane that is. Like that's, it is moving quickly. It is going to be a future problem. Like, I mean, again, t timing is hard. Like synthetic mm -hmm. biology. If, if somehow AI were not being a thing, um, I would tell people to worry about like um, synthetic pathogens such as COVID-19. But worse, like, uh, I'm, you know, it's like a pretty gloomy fact that we like had the big synthetic pathogen disaster and 
like the reaction to this was that like half the United States doesn't want to take vaccines anymore. It's it's a it's a pretty it, it, I consider it a blow against the theory that your like small disasters will successfully immunize civilization against large ones. Um, but yeah, synthetic pathogens can clearly get much worse than COVID nineteen. Um, I think a bunch of people are worried about AI specifically enabling that. Uh, even if AI were not going to be a thing, I would still be like, that's a thing to worry about. Um, if AI if AI were not going to be a thing, um, I'd probably start to worry about uh, who's not having kids. If you know we're going to be long, around that long, but we're not, so moot point. Okay. Uh, was this a satisfying AI? <laughs> where, where, where else do you want to explore on this one? Um, I feel like for well, how, how do you get? Well, I'm curious. Okay, I I want people to be interested in the things that I care about. So I feel like for politics now we sit on the other end of that as political people. To whereas you're unwilling to put a timeline on anything, political people's timeline is always like fucking tomorrow. This is the most important election. This is the most important problem. This is the most important piece of legislation. If you don't pass this, everything is over. Um, do you feel? Um, do you ever feel like a compulsion to? push something ahead where it's like, hey, uh, I know that this is like a fingerprint, but like, you know, like you said, like 10 to 15 years, this is something we really need to start evaluating more. Is there anything like that? Or are you just like content kind of doing like the more theoretical side and, you know, either believe me or don't? And yeah. I mean, if somebody were to dig up my manifold prediction market records, you would find that in the market on whether we're all dead in 2030, which resolves NA in 2027 to um, avoid the usual problem of is your model worth anything if the world ends? No. Um, but you know, if it resolves NA in 2027, you can get like temporarily temporary boost by anticipating how other people will trade. So there's hopefully some incentive to like try to guess the right direction there, but since ultimately unbound from reality, of course, this is not a true virtuous prediction market, but it's hard to get those. Um, anyway, you would find that I um, initially placed like a limit order that was sell at 80% and uh, buy at 40%. For everyone dead by 2030. So, in, unless I, I lie, you know, unless, unless I like poison the well by making non epistemic trades and not announcing the fact, you know, like you can you can tell that I don't think it's like all that likely to be very, very far out. Okay. Are we satisfied? But with, with this topic? Yeah, uh, no, that, that's wanna... up to you. I obviously have a not literally infinite, um, but unbounded supply of things to say in the sense that if I said all of them, I would have thought of more by the time I was done. Sure. Uh, well, what's next on the prediction market list? All right. Let me, let me...